There are fewer thrills to a gamer than seeing one of your favorite franchises return from the digital grave. Ever since Rare split ways with Nintendo back in 2002, DK just hasn't been the same. He's tried new hobbies, other spin-offs, taking up his grandpa's old antics, and the only new platforming game he made received mixed criticism. But at long last, DK has gone back home. Back to where he truly belongs. Donkey Kong Country returns. You have no idea how excited I was when this game was first announced. Of course, I had always wanted to see another 3D installment like DK64, but I'm not complaining. Knowing it was in the hands of Retro, I felt relaxed yet a little worried. Retro did a fantastic job on the Metroid Prime series, but could they really go from a more serious first-person action-adventure game to a... less than serious take on a 2D platformer? The jump in gameplay style seemed too big to make. Fortunately, they're called Retro for a reason. One day, a bunch of random tiki guys from a volcanic eruption start hypnotizing the animals of DK Island and take Donkey Kong's banana horde. Of all the no doubt, dirty, rotten, yellow-bellied, slime-sucking tricks! That was my idea! What's so special about his bananas anyway? Are they made of gold or something? The curse of the golden banana. The curse of the golden banana. Well, unlike the original DKC games that were only explained in the WearRare.com scribes section, the tiki's taken for a reason that's explained later on in the game. It makes sense for a plot, but I still question, how does that work exactly? Turns out the Kongs are unaffected by their musical charm, and DK gives them a little advice. DON'T TOUCH MY BANANAS! It's up to DK and D to get DK's banana hoard back, which means it's all like- Wait, what? Trademark? Ah, oh, screw it. The gameplay objective is just like any other 2D platformer. Go from point A to point B. DK is able to jump, roll, grab, and ground pound like he used to. His new abilities are being able to take a second hit. Bell 10, the 800 pound gorilla learned how to toughen up. Hang on to grassy platforms. And blowing. Rolling, pounding, and blowing are all done by shaking the Wiimote or nunchuck and using the control stick. To roll, shake the nunchuck while pushing left or right on the control stick. To ground pound, simply shake the Wiimote or nunchuck while standing still. And to blow, press down and shake the Wiimote or nunchuck. Yes, you can still roll off an edge and jump just like the good old days. Instead of star barrels, these check stands act as your checkpoint to start from should you meet an untimely end. And since you're in DK's country, you'll meet plenty of those. Throughout the levels, you'll find bananas, and collecting a hundred of them gets you an extra life. You'll grab banana coins that you can use to buy items such as extra lives, hints, a third hit good for one time, and invincibility at Cranky's shop. These red balloons are your one-ups, and you'll be needing as many of them as you can get. Hidden throughout the levels are these puzzle pieces. Yes, I wanted to call them Jiggies as well, but this game isn't made by Rare. I believe Adam Sessler from X-Play put it best. Rare has moved on to bigger and better things at Microsoft, like designing hats for avatars and genuinely letting down their fans. Mr. Sessler and whoever wrote that, I could not have said it better myself. If you've taken damage, you can get a heart to restore a hit. Collecting the letters K, O, N, and G in each level of each world will unlock a new level which will take time, patience, and plenty of lives to beat. You have been warned. You won't be going through these levels by yourself, so don't panic. Getting these DK barrels and breaking them open sets free your partner and best little buddy, Diddy Kong, who brought his jetpack and peanut pop guns along for the ride. The jetpack lets you slowly descend for a few seconds, and having Diddy along will give you an extra two hits. But if Diddy takes too much damage, you'll have to find him again in a DK barrel. Not wanting to be left out is Rambi, your old animal buddy. Rambi takes out enemies, boulders, stomps the ground, walks on spikes, and can charge. Carnage for the win! Though you're back on DK Island, it's not the same as last time, most likely due to the environmental changes and plate tectonic shifts or something like that. The places you'll be exploring are the mandatory jungle, a new beach setting, classic ruins, minecart carnage caves, vine swinging forests, boneyard cliffs, nostalgic factories, Dante's Inferno, and an unlockable ninth. Each world, except for the ninth, has between five and eight levels in each one, and one level that you need to buy a key from Cranky to unlock. The levels are designed to look like whatever location you're in, unlike the Super Nintendo games where you had three levels based on where you are, and a few levels that wouldn't make any sense unless you looked at the map. The goal at the end of the level is a barrel, and when you hit it, it gives you what's on the front. But if you time it to the DK logo, shake the controls as fast as you can, and it will give you a random item that multiplies to the amount of times you shook the controllers. It definitely gives the feeling of the end of the level bonus from Donkey Kong Country 2 and Jungle Beat. And I love it for that! After clearing through the levels on the map, you'll fight a boss. Figure out their pattern, beat them, wait for it, then check the controls as fast as you can to properly beat down the Tikis. After each boss, you'll move on to the next part of the island. Retro said that they've been playing the Donkey Kong Country games almost non-stop so they could truly understand what made them so great, and I can honestly say that they capture the essence of those classics to a near-perfect understanding. 
right down to even those catchy level names. The classics were known for four things. Searching endlessly for secrets, groundbreaking graphics, captivating music, and showing you no mercy. Secrets are scattered everywhere from movable walls to hidden bonuses. Most of the time the secrets take you to a bonus room where if you collect everything without falling, you receive a puzzle piece. Level designs range from visually stunning, hard as nails, classic minecarts, foreground to background switch, chase scenes, and the new rocket rides. The levels are well thought out and can become very challenging after the third world. The only time you ever need to do something else than beat the level to move on to the boss is finding and pounding these buttons in three levels in World 7. By the way, the first level in the factories has two very cool cameos in it. This one with the old Donkey Kong Arcade level and Mr. Game & Watch. This level reminded me of Super Mario Galaxy 2, but if it didn't bother me in Sonic Colors, it doesn't bother me here. Musically speaking, it's mainly a remix of the first Donkey Kong Country game with only a handful of new tunes. I don't have a problem with that, but I wish they would have used some remixes from Donkey Kong Country 2. I love that one the most. As far as finding secrets, challenging level design, and even the mid-air roll jump move from the Donkey Kong Country series goes, Retro pretty much nailed the feeling of the classics, but they did remove a few things and change one very important element. Having Diddy around is great for descending and having an extra two hits, but you can't switch between them at any time. The only time you can play as Diddy is when you're playing in co-op mode, and you have to be careful because both players share the same live count. So make sure you play with someone who is just as good as you, if not better. Diddy can only use his peanut pop gun in co-op mode, and works by shaking the Wii mode or nunchuck. As far as the co-op mode goes, it isn't the game's strongest feature, which is very disappointing since I've always wanted to see a co-op mode for the Donkey Kong Country games. Even worse are the levels where co-op just doesn't exist. New Super Mario Bros. Wii is the better co-op platformer for the Wii, but in terms of challenging level design, you get the idea. Though I like the idea of the rocket rides, the controls will most likely frustrate anyone. Getting the rocket up and down with precise angling is difficult since it's only controlled by how much or little you hold the A button. Players of the game know exactly what I'm talking about, though the music during these parts are fantastic. Maybe it's because I took a course in jazz history, but it sounds like something out of those old swing clubs from the 1930s and 40s. I've been hearing a lot of people complaining that the rolling should be mapped to a button and not shaking the controllers. And I completely agree with that, but I actually never really had that much of a problem shaking the controllers to get them to roll. Only on very few occasions did it actually cost me a life, but other than that, it works pretty fine. What I'm about to say next might cause some confusion, but understand this. I was smiling the entire time I played through this game. Even when I lost more lives than I should have, many of which were my own fault, the smile never left my face. Heck, I even did pathetic little tap dances after I cleared a level. Can you blame me? But the game didn't take me any more than a few days to beat, including the ninth world. To put it a way that anyone can understand, it felt like hanging out with an old friend you haven't seen in years again, but he left before he had to. The only thing left to do afterwards were find all the puzzle pieces, take the time attack mode, and the newly unlocked mirror mode. Mirror Mode lets you play through the levels going left without help from Diddy, your items, and only one hit. Time Attack is what you think it is. Play through the level as fast as you can. But to get a gold medal pretty much means don't stop world jumping and pushing right. I lost interest in doing the Time Attack and Mirror Modes because they felt like a hollow replay value. Finding the puzzle pieces can be fun, but they throw in a few ways to get them that even the old DKC fans might get caught off guard by. Squawks can help you by squawking when you get close to one, but sometimes he doesn't do anything. I've gone through this level three times with Squawk trying to find the last piece and he never lived up to his name. Sadly, I lost interest in trying to find them all. For a while, I was trying to figure out why I was so obsessed with finding the secrets in Donkey Kong Country 2 and why I lost interest in this one. Then I found out why and the answer was so obvious. In DKC 2 and 3, it was finding all the secrets that opened up the secret levels. In this one, it's collecting all the Kong letters that open them up. The Kong letters are in plain sight. Granted, some of them can be hard to get, but you never have to go searching for them. Simply put, it's easier to get all the Kong letters than it is to get all the puzzle pieces. Getting the puzzle pieces unlock extra content that has nothing to do with the gameplay. If the Kong letters unlock the content and the puzzle pieces unlock the other levels, I wouldn't have gotten to the extra world so fast. 
Time Attack in Mirror Mode might interest some players, but I really found no interest in it if the rewards don't equal the amount of work you had to put into it. I tried them, but they're not the best part of the game. Fans of the old school DKC games won't be disappointed. It's challenging, has a great soundtrack, and offers some modes for those who really want them. Though there are some noticeable differences, such as if you have both Kongs and die, you have to find a DK barrel to get Diddy back, Retro has done a great job taking a classic franchise, keeping true to what made it special, and building on top of it. I personally loved it, but found very little to come back to after beating the ninth world. Hopefully they'll make a sequel that will extend the replay value, fine-tune the co-op mode, add more animal buddies, have a remixed version of DKC2 soundtrack, and bring back the Kremlings. I found them to be way more memorable than these generic Tiki guys. I imagine Kirill's response to not being in the game was the same as mine. By the way, Retro, if you're looking for a new challenge after you're done with the Donkey Kong Country games, could you... you know... Either you or Treasure, either one is fine. A 4 out of 5. A couple of flaws, but overall a good game.